Today's question is, what does the Bible say about inflation? In this video, I'll answer that question from a biblical perspective. Then afterwards, as always, I'll share some helpful resources, so stick around until the end. Inflation is one of those words in common usage today, but that the Bible does not use. In the context of economic issues, inflation is an increase in overall prices and a corresponding decrease in the purchasing power of the money in circulation. During times of inflation, money is worth less than it was before the inflation hit. While the Bible does not use the word inflation, the concept of sustained price increases and the misery they cause exists in the pages of Scripture. For example, when the Aramaeans attacked Israel during the days of Israel's king Jehoram, the Israelites experienced extreme inflation. The siege of the capital city led to a lack of goods and, as we would say today, out-of-control inflation. There was a great famine in the city of Samaria. The siege lasted so long that a donkey's head sold for 80 pieces of silver and a cup of dove's dung sold for 5 pieces of silver. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 2. Inflation was so bad that food and fuel were unaffordable, and people were eating donkey's heads and burning doves' droppings if they could get them. Under those harsh conditions, King Jehoram was ready to give up and surrender to Aram. In fact, he blamed the situation on God rather than on his own wickedness. This disaster is from the Lord, he said in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 33. But Elijah the prophet gave him hope to hold out one more day. Elijah replied, Listen to this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord says. By this time tomorrow, in the markets of Samaria, six quarts of choice flour will cost only one piece of silver, and twelve quarts of barley grain will cost only one piece of silver. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1. God's promise was that prices would drop dramatically, indicating an end to the siege. So, inflation has been around for a long time, and the examples in Scripture show it is exacerbated by war, disruption of supply chains, and lockdowns in the form of sieges. Another factor contributing to inflation is greed, which can take the form of price gouging, dishonest weights and measures, etc. The Bible repeatedly condemns dishonest gain. Do not have two differing weights in your bag, one heavy, one light. Do not have two differing measures in your house, one large, one small. You must have accurate and honest weights and measures. Deuteronomy chapter 25, verses 13 through 15. The problem with dishonest measures is that if you pay $10 to get 10 ounces of a product, but the seller only gives you 8 ounces, then the purchasing power of your money has decreased. In reality, you're paying not $1 per ounce, but $125 per ounce. It's an inflation. The Bible's injunctions against dishonest weights and measures, if followed, would help curb inflation. Global inflation is predicted to occur during the tribulation, as part of God's judgment on earth. When the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come. I looked, and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures, saying, two pounds of wheat for a day's wages, and six pounds of barley for a day's wages, and do not damage the oil and the wine. Revelation chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. In this judgment, the luxuries are still available, but the necessities will be in short supply. Significantly, this third horseman of the apocalypse follows the bringer of war. Revelation chapter 6, verses 3 through 4. The reality of inflation should remind all of us that riches are fleeting. Cast but a glance at riches and they are gone, for they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 5. All of us have at one time or another felt like the people in Haggai's day. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Haggai chapter 1, verse 6. Our trust should be in something more reliable. Paul enjoined the rich not to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. 
rich or poor, we can store up treasures in heaven. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. We have a sure hope in the shrinking value of money. Those who trust in their riches will fall, but the righteous will thrive like a green leaf. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 28. Want to learn more? Subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Visit gotquestions.org for more great content and check out the details section below this video. There you'll find one book I recommend along with several links to related questions. If you'd like to learn about Bible Munch or if you're interested in bite-sized devotionals, subscribe to Bible Munch on YouTube. It's linked right here. Now remember, got questions? The Bible has answers. We'll help you find them.